Okay, so today's topic is going to be enhancing HVAC efficiency, load calculation for energy conservation and sustainability. Now, this is a technical topic webinar and it will be presented by Mr. Fricky Marx, who is an EIT lecturer. So uh, for some common questions and frequently asked questions. Uh, so at the end of the webinar, everyone who registered for this webinar, uh, even though they did not attend, uh, some of them might have not attended, some of them might not have attended, will actually receive a copy mm -hmm. of the webinar slides as well as the video. This will be provided for them uh, in the mailbox. So please just check uh, in about two business days, uh, those details will be shared to you. Uh, through your mail. And then for the certificate of attendance, as this is a technical topic, you will receive a certificate of attendance. However, ladies and gentlemen, you will need to request for the certificate and you'll do so by means of either filling the Microsoft form through a QR code or a link, all which I will provide at the end of the presentation. So a little bit more about EIT. EIT is an engineering specialist. We offer engineering courses uh, and we deliver them from a professional certificate, diplomas, advanced diplomas, undergraduate certificate, graduate certificates, and then bachelor's, master's, and the doctor of engineering. We offer both vocational education and training courses as well as higher education courses. We offer industry oriented programs uh, that are aimed uh, and are designed by industry experts experts, people who've actually been in the field and are willing to impart their knowledge and create courses based on this. We are a world-class Australian accredited uh, education provider. Uh, our vocational programs and higher educational degrees are registered and accredited by the Australian government. And also depending on which course you're interested in, they might also enjoy the benefits of international recognition. So our lecturers, such as Fricky himself, are industry experienced people who've worked in the field and are now teaching or lecturing at EIT. And because we offer a unique delivery module, our students are able to study either online or they are able to study uh, on campus. And our campuses are in Australia, Melbourne and in Perth. Okay, this is our agenda for the day. I won't stay long on this slide. Uh, Fricky will go through his presentation. At the end, we will have a conclusion and Q&A session. Please make sure to stay until that time so that I'm also able to provide you uh, with the links as well as the QR code in order for you to scan to receive your certificate of attendance. Please make note of the fact that the form does expire, so you will need to be able to to fill in the form before the 25th of April UCT time, UTC time rather, so that you're able to get your certificate of attendance. Well, that's it from my end. Uh, Fricky, you may go through. Thank you so much, everyone. I will see you in the post webinar session. Thank you, Tsubisu, and uh, I assume everyone can hear me. Okay, that's um, my background in terms of my experience in the field of engineering. But let's get to the slides. Okay, so uh, somebody put up their hand. Do you want to talk to us? Can you, if there's a problem with audio or the slides or anything like that? Okay, no problem. So if you want to, yeah, so we, we're going to have a Q&A session. So if you can wait for that, then we can um, address the, um, the questions at that time. Okay, so there's another hand, so I'm just going to lower that. Okay, so as an introduction, I took an event that is um, very important in the world today, the Olympic Games that's coming up in France. And they want to make that the greenest in the event's history. Now, if you look at HVAC systems of the future, then they talk about geothermal heat pumps, solar power, smart thermostats and even iced powered air conditioning 
in order to reduce the energy use and also the environmental impact of air conditioning systems. Now, looking at that in, in terms of the future, what they have been implemented as part of the Olympics coming up is geothermal and then also solar energy. Now, Paris is keeping building cool with using the river water instead of air conditioning. Now, just looking at this, focusing on that is, um, so in, in Paris itself, um, this urban cooling system draws water from the Seine River. The picture that you see on the right hand side is in employees that then work on the access stairs to the un underground urban cooling network power station, which is developed by François de Paris, if that's the way you pronounce that, and it's using water from the Seine River to to generate air conditioning um, and they expanding that. So that's one of the things. So they they the buildings pick up the coolness of the water for air conditioning, which is then drawn from the Seine River via this uh, power stations that you see in the picture over there. Now the focusing on that um, so um, the the main um, uh, let's say the, in in the news they say no echo no problem at Paris 2024. Now I want to focus on this because it's more than just the air conditioning that's been addressed there. Yeah, that's a that's an important um, thing that we can address. But yes. Um, the delivery mechanism. So there's always something that needs some sort of uh, power. So, and what's the what? And the other question is, what's the long-term impact on what they're doing now? But what I said is, we designed the buildings that it would be comfortable, and they emph emphasis is on the summer, and they say you don't need air conditioning. So this is point number one, because we oriented the facades. Now that's very really important because one of the conferences that I attended in South Africa, at, uh, which was presented by the South African Bureau of Standards, is one of the things is the houses is you, if you want to face it correctly, then you have to work according to the orientation of the facades. And uh, people don't do that, uh, although it's it's basically in in the specifications generated by the South African Bureau of Standards, because a lot of people, overseas people, if they visit here, they will they will tell me that your houses are warm in the summer and cold in the winter, and that's because one of the things that people don't focus on. The house that I built, I, I've imp implemented that. Then the second thing that I also implemented was insulation. They say insulation really efficient because that is going to bring down the load, the heat that you have to take or the cold that you have to take out of the house. That's the second point, insulation. And then we get to the point of naturally cool water. So. They say you would not need air conditioning and the people that's going to stay there afterwards um, will be able to, to, to live there in the summer without any problems. Now, it seems like in the news, um, they are worried about that, uh, about the athletes not, um, not living comfortably. So the people say they're going to get a portable um, HVAC uh, uh, systems to help uh, the athletes um, uh, to stay cool. Okay, so now you must try and calculate all the portable air cons, what's the impact in, in that in terms of um, the energy that they're going to use. 
But this is an example of um, the orientated facades for maximum solar gain. So with the, um, the azimuth angle um, on the inside here, and on the outside here, we've got the solar gain percentage. Okay, so that um, the solar gain percentage, as you can see, uh, once we face north, then we we sit at solar gain percentage of 100%. And then there's the thing about the overhang, which you can then, if you if you make that correct, then it will give you coolness in the summer, but it will allow the sun to come in um, in the winter. Now, just the just getting to the installation. Okay, so I get on uh, people putting up their hands. Uh, okay, so I think we must work with comments, and um, otherwise we're not going to get this present the, the presentation done in in time. So if you've got a question, just hold on to it, and we're going to get to Q and A, and you can then ask the question. Just make a note of that. So what do I say about the insulation? Um, okay, so we talked about the cooling floors, but they also have done something with the balconies that provides shade for underneath. Then the windows has got shutters. Now, the interesting thing is if you the windows, if they have to work on the workload, then they, work, they take it about a thousand in terms of the amount um, uh, of uh, heat that, that can come in through a, a large window. So that's very really significant. Now the shutters already will help. Then they've got single leaf windows, not large bay windows. That will make a difference. And triple glazing. So tri triple glazing is going to give you that additional um, insulation that you um, require. Now I know um, Double insulation glass is something that's used in Europe. I see some people from Spain here, but it's not something that's basically used in, in, in South Africa. It's something that can work very well. Now let's have a quick look at um, the comparison of the HVAC systems that we have today. Now, uh, um, there's a lot of, uh, there's different definitions. Some people will divide it between those that use ducting and those that don't use ducting. Okay, so I've just taken this for um, um, to look at. So we've got heating and cooling split systems that tells us they are split. Um, there's two main units, one for heating, one for cooling. Then we've got the hybrid split system. So similar features than the one on the first one, but at, um, they can mitigate energy cost through electric hybrid heating systems, okay, which then differentiates them from the other. Then we get to duct free, the mini split. So um, comes up with a huge upfront cost. Um, and these types of HVACs are individual units in each room. Now that, that's the way we started. We normally, if you if you went to hotels, they had that um, HVAC for every room. Then we have the package HVAC, and most of us will know that that's what you would normally find on the big buildings with all the ducting that comes with it, um, and it would then be able to um, fulfill the cooling and heating of um, the houses. Okay, so yeah, um, so then, now this is just a picture of the splits system. So with the cooling and then the furnace or the blower on the inside for heating. So it comes in two basic configurations, either as cooling only or as then as a heat pump. So um, so, that for, so that's the, the split air conditioning and I try to list what is what the key feature, and the key feature for this will be one firmus that controls temperature for the entire unit. Then advantages, one of the biggest benefits is uh, it's already a package unit. 
So it's already engineered by the manufacturer with the matching outdoor and indoor units. Um, it also way less than a one piece package system. Um, okay, then these uh, split systems require smaller openings in the structure for refrigerant piping and it's um, are smaller than rooftop units okay so which makes sense because the rooftop units is uh, um, it's it's one uh, big system okay so uh, so Pisa, there's a question you did mention it in the beginning but uh, i think a lot of people didn't catch it um, but under my settings, which is one, two, three, the, the fourth one on the bottom. So if you click under my settings, uh, then you can go to notification settings that comes up and you can then go and um, those that you'll see these little green ticks, um, you, you just have to untick them and then you won't get any of the notifications. Okay. All right, so um, that's uh, um, for people that ask how to get rid of the notifications. There's the hybrid system. Now, with the hybrid system, if you've got a heat pump, so it depends on um, the, the using a heat pump immediately uh, reduce the, 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 the energy that's been used. So it it reduces any con energy consumption. That's the the uh, um, the main or let's say the the key feature of this system. Uh, and only need the gas furnace when it when it uh, goes below a certain. I think that is minus seven degrees Celsius. If we uh, look at it. Okay then. Um, Again, advantages, disadvantages. Um, now, it, this this system um, are on the rise because of the ability to mitigate energy cost. Okay, so it uh, it reduces in energy cost through the hybrid heating system. Um, heat pump is much more efficient than relying on electricity alone, and it. It's the best choice for home in warmer regions, okay, which doesn't go under um, minus seven degrees Celsius. And it can be manually operated to control room temperature. Okay, so, so it will help to cool and uh, dehumidify your home efficiently. Okay, then uh, the, the ductless. Um, or mini split air conditioning system. Uh, it's got a condenser that sits outside and evaporator or air handling unit that sits on the inside. Now the coolant uh, pass between these two systems um, and some ductless systems aren't just an air conditioner, they are what they called a heat pump. Okay. But that means that it gets cold outside, it can reverse direction and can bring warm air in. And there's the as long as it doesn't drop below minus seven degrees Celsius. So this key feature is it provides ductless temperature control for individual spaces. Okay, so there's uh, the conduit that runs between them um, makes it uh, um, more acceptable. Um, now, uh, when you're indoors, your central AC is invisible. It's a ductless system, duct free as they call it, no duct work, so it will cost less to install. And uh, it's just they don't have enough power to cool a large home um, if it's a ductless system, so that's what you have. But in other advantage, it's, it's, it's quieter than a duct system, and it, you can provide greater independent control. So that's the advantages um, of it. And then the, the package the heating and air con system. So it's a single unit, as you see in the picture over here. And um, the 
so it's multiple units such as air conditioning heater into a single unit they generally used in warmer climates so because your heating system is not as powerful as other options okay um saying that if um the, the big units that we've got on the buildings they are made powerful powerful enough to do that but uh, again if you look at the advantages for this a single unit is um and it's easy to maintain so that's the advantage of this unit um it's not as energy efficient as the split system um but it's easy to achieve high efficiency with a split system than the package unit. Um, it's but without a well-sized operating duct system, the overall heating and cooling system will be limited. Okay, so that we said from the start. So you need duct the ducting uh, depending on what area you try to to uh, cool or heat up. Now getting to the HVAC load calculation. Now that determines the heating and cooling needs on of the building. And factors such as size, there's orientation again, there's insulation again, and then one thing that we haven't addressed up to now is occupancy. So what is the there's the sunlight coming in? What's the amount of sunlight entering? Um, then another thing, what's the amount of sunlight entering? Um, then another thing that we haven't, the equipment inside. What is the heat generated by this equipment? Now, lights today, which is interesting because we've moved over from incandescent lights to LEDs. LEDs generate a lot less heat. Now, one example of that was when I presented a course in Canada. Um, they changed the, the traffic lights to LEDs. And when it was snowing, the heat generated by the LEDs was not enough to melt the snow, which was previous not a, not a problem with the incandescent lights. They generated enough heat to melt the snow because you've got that little bucket underneath your traffic lights. And they had to put in a little um, heater there. So, um, so, so an undersized system will need, will need help to keep up with the heating and the cooling. And an oversized system will then uh, decrease energy efficiency because um, of, it's not going to run at optimum. So that's why correct load calculation um, helps you to get the correct heating and cooling needs. So. So we looked at um, the heat coming in, but also looked at the heat generated inside. Now, just getting to the fact that we use uh, the PTU, um, so the measure of energy that we need to add or remove from the system. So the British thermal unit. Now. Even if I, I, I just took an example of uh, an aircon system that in South Africa, if you want to buy it, so you can say the Samsung that you see on the right hand side, uh, 12,000 BTU white. So it's Brit British thermal unit and it's uh, 12,000 uh, BTU per hour is will give you one ton of cooling just to get a feel for the unit. And one ton of cooling, also then called refrigeration, that's the amount of heat needed to melt a pound of ice over 24 hours. So that you see where, where they actually got that unit from. Now, uh, the important thing that I just want to highlight with this slide is that if you really want to know what you need, then you will have to measure the heat load. So, and you can do that uh, with, you can see here, they've got thermocouples. So you can, um, with putting that in the right places, you can measure what is the real heat load generated. And there's the formula, uh, Q being then the heat load is equal to the mass flow rate. Uh, 
either in kilograms per second or pound per hour and CP is the specific heat and joules um, uh, 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 so you can either do it in joules or then uh, B, uh, BTU uh, per pound to, to give you but right the uh, joules per gram that's the Kelvin and then what's the change in temperature that you want to achieve so um, how much do you want to, to cool that down now heat load or heat gain so your a building um, or room gains heat from many sources as we've just highlighted so we've got we've got people inside you've got then equipment inside different types of equipment and then we've got warm air coming in from the outside so the biggest source of heat is solar radiation from the sun beating down on the roof the walls pouring in through the windows heating internal surfaces now where i'm currently staying the same problem it's so hot inside but it's cool outside so all the, the the sun that was shining on the building make it hot inside although uh, outside it's a lot cooler now the sum of all these heat sources is known as heat gain or heat load and we then express that either in BTU the British thermal unit or then kilowatts and we'll look at what is the, the conversion there now let's look at, at the simple calculation here so if we now take an office with uh, average insulation and uh, lighting with two to three occupants three to four personal computers and a photocopier then we can do a quick calculation of the heat load by looking at the length the width and the height so the dimensions of the building and if it's in BTU multiplied by four if you want to work um, with the length, width, and the height, you multiply it by 141. Now, that constant comes from the heat load per unit area. Okay, so that's why we the con con constant. So it's, it's, it's determined by looking at uh, different types of, of um, uh, buildings uh, or rooms and that's where the constant was coming from okay so this remember this is uh, so you it's a quick calculation just to get the feeling for what uh, what what you have to remove and if we if that is the measurements and then it, it works out to 8460 BTU every uh, occupant adds 500 so if you have four of them then it comes down to 10,460 BTU and then we can we can convert from BTU to kilowatt so there's the conversion factor so 10,460 BTU is equal to 3,065 kilowatt okay so this to get uh, the the conversion between the two so if you now want to do a more accurate heat load calculation for every time of room because there's uh, all the sources coming from the outside that's the, there's also the heat generated from the inside so and that's where you, if you use the simple calculation if you've got a big window then they add a thousand BTU uh, just for the heat coming in through that uh, big window but the heat depends on the size of the building so the size the area that we that um, then the the size and position of the windows and if there's any shading the number of occupants okay so we we just looked at the size and we looked at the number of occupants but there's the windows the heat coming in then the equipment on the inside now lighting is part of that equipment and then you can you have to add all of this together to get to 
what you finally need. But just to get, what we're trying to do is we're trying to create comfort, comfortable conditions for the people that have to work and live inside that, um, that building or room. Now, the feeling of comfort for people experience in an air conditioning place depends on the following five main factors. The supply of oxygen and the removal of carbon dioxide. Um, okay, audio not working. Um, is, it, is it just uh, Ishan's got a problem? Zepisu, uh, uh, is there any problem with audio on your side? Okay, so then it's, uh, yeah, so audio, normally you have to lock out and lock back in again. Then the removal of body heat dissipated by the occupants and body moisture dissipated by the occupants and sufficient air movement and air distribution in that occupied space. Now, to maintain purity of air, we have to remove the odor and the dust. And now, so real comfort for that person cannot be achieved um, if these five factors are not properly controlled. And the control of these factors is essential in order to produce a satisfactory environment. Now, on the right hand side in the picture, we've got just the, the different uh, methods of um, heat uh, that the person is going to experience. So these radiation, so heat in the walls, can, the heat can be radiated from objects. There's convection, so that's the airflow. And then there's evaporation. So evaporation part of uh, you sweating. So that's the evaporation that um, can handle. So the the phenomena of heat loss from the body we can represent with this equation. So it's the um, if we if we just enlarge this quickly. So it's the uh, your the heat metabolism minus work that you're doing because um, then it's the heat evaporation plus minus convection and then plus minus radiation plus respiration and heat stored. Now, um, the main purpose of your air conditioning system is you, you want a balance between the met metabolic heat produced and then the heat that's taken away. So, um, but you need to, if you want to cool it, then you need to take a lit little bit more heat away in order to reduce the temperature. Now, the metabolic heat depends on the activity of the human being. Okay, and there is tables that, that give you um, figures in terms of the amount of work that the, the people are doing and how that impact on the heat that they gain. Now, here's our psychometric chart, okay, so which is now an easy chart to use if you want to determine also the heat load. And on the psychometric charge, they have defined what is the comfortable um, conditions for the human. Okay, so uh, we talked about the variables and the, the American Society of Heating and Refrigeration Engineers have conducted an exhaustive test on various people subjected to wide various of combination of temperature, humidity, air, motion. And the, the scientific method to measure comfort is then to introduce the concept of effective temperature. And the effective temperature is then um, um, in, in that um, a psychrometric charge that has been defined. Now, factors governing this opti optimum effective temperature is um, so the on, the on the comfort chart it shows the percentage of people comfortable at various effective temperatures. 
Uh, conditions may vary person to person, nation to nation, different food habits, climatic conditions and altitude, but these are responsible for changing the optimum effective temperature. So that's why people living in colder climates are comfortable at lower temperatures than people in warmer regions. So your uh, effective temperature in winter is 90 degrees and then 22 degrees in summer. So that's what, what come from that study. Hello everyone, uh, I'm just trying to check on Fricky. I think he has lost connectivity uh, for the time being. Just a moment, please. He is reconnecting currently. Okay, apologies there. I, I disappeared there for a moment and I've just put in there while I was waiting um, the answer on Erasmus' question there. Now, clothing affect this effective temperature because that will, um, if you've got something um, on that's warm, then it's, it's going to, your heat is going to increase instead of decrease. Okay. And metabolic rate of women and men are different. Air velocity, okay, the, the higher air velocity requires less difference between outdoor effective temperature and inside effective temperature because it's taking the heat away. Okay, so design considerations is what you have to take into account is outdoor, indoor air temperature, as well as humidity, as well as the moisture content. There's the orientation again. We talked about the dimensions. Construction materials is going to uh, have an impact on the insulation. Materials is going to uh, have an impact on the insulation. Watch the surrounding conditions, the doors and the windows. We talk about the heat coming in, how many people are working in there, what is the appliances uh, there, what sort of ventilation is there, and um, now the operation, and that can be the operation of the machines as well, um, is that intermittent or is that continuously? Now, just to look at sensible and latent heat components, so your load components, we can divide between the two. Sensible, that's the result when heat entering the conditioned space um, that causes dry bulb temperature. Okay, now uh, again, for, for people that work with air conditioning, um, we've got two thermometers, one that gives you the dry bulb temperature and one that will give you um, uh, uh, include humidity as well. It's got a, uh, a wick that is then wetted and which you swing around and you can then read that off as well. So sensible is then the heat um, called, um, the, the heat entering the conditioned space that causes the dry bulb, the normal temperature to increase. The latent heat results when moisture entering a space causes the humidity to increase. Now the thing is, uh, our load component normally have both of them, okay, not just one of them. So the effective room total heat is the room sensible heat and the latent heat. So that includes both just the heat as, as well as the, the humidity. The ground, the grand total heat um, is then, um, so 
that determines the capacity of the refrigeration plant. So there's a few terms and the ratios that we come across in heat load um, equations. But at the end of the day, um, there's a combination of the two that increase the load heat. Now let's look at um, steps in terms of doing the calculations. You have to calculate the area. You start with the area which we used and then multiply it. Uh, so remember uh, the figure that I said that that it comes from the heat load per unit area. Again, people have done some calculations. Um, and then the heat going through the windows. If the windows, if there's no shading, then you must multiply your result with 1.4. And then they divide it into north window, BTU. If no sh shading, north window, south window. Uh, if no shading, and then the total of the what is coming in through the windows. Step three, calculate the occupants. Okay, now it seems like people use between five and six hundred BTU per person. That you then have to to add to that uh, calculation that we've done. Then the machinery inside. Um, um, the find the power watts for each of them and add that together. Multiply that by three point four. Step five, calculate the generate, uh, the heat generated by lighting. Okay, so again, the wattage multiplied by 4.25. Uh, yes. Um, then step six, to find the total heat load. Okay, so it's the area, what's coming through the windows, the occupants, the equipment, the lighting, and then divide the heat load by the cooling capacity of your air conditioning unit to determine how many air conditioning conditioners you're going to need. Then, um, okay, so that will give you the, um, the um, air conditioning. Now, the one thing that wasn't addressed here is infiltration, because uh, if there's now wind blowing on the outside, that can mean it's more heat coming in or less heat. So if the, pro the doors are not properly sealed or the windows are not properly sealed. Um, okay, this constants, uh, it, as, as I said, it was um, developed by people that done some calculations. So that's where the constants come from. So that constants is it's about the heat load per unit um, area. That, uh, so that's where the constants come from. Now the manual J calculation, um, proper design begins with an accurate load calculation. So that's what we are looking at, um, what, which we discussed up to now. And it's critical in sizing the HVAC, then there's um, there's different methods. The manual J load calculation is one of the methods. And if you want to properly size an HVAC, um, you can use this, this technique from the air conditioning contracts of America. Okay, so if you go and research it, then you'll, you'll find it. But it basically boils down the same points that we have just discussed. Um, in terms of um, doing the calculation. So the only thing that we, um, uh, so we looked at the windows, but you must look at it coming in for, through the the, um, the walls as well. And that will depend on what's the insulation that was, that was done in the walls. Okay, and then the infiltration. But let's look at, um, some of these um, developments in terms of air conditioning, movement activated aircon. So if there's any movement, now that's not something new. We, we use it for uh, big buildings so that the lights doesn't switch on if there's no movement, if there's no people. So the only thing that they've done over here is they had aluminum rods that hang from the ceiling and the movement actuates the, the sensors. Yeah, that's 100% uh, correct, yeah, that's similar to that. So just couple it to uh, don't cool down the building if there's no people in it. Okay, 
Um, okay, that's interesting. So the Telcom SA campus in Centurion. Okay, that's the the big um, campus um, there. So the, they operate that way. Then thermally driven air conditioning. Um, now this is an Australian company. Uh, Corasim has produced a low-cost alternative to traditional air conditioning. It's not widespread technology yet, um, but uh, firmly driven is a system that uses solar energy and supplemented by natural gas, making it a highly efficient and effective system. Okay, so that is something that uh, seems that will come on the market in some time. On demand hot water recirculating. Now this is this is a quite an interesting one. Hi everyone, I think we've lost Freaky once more, but he is reconnecting as we speak. He will be back in the session shortly. Okay, I'm back again. I think so. That was luckily a short in, a short uh, interruption there. Now this taco Jenny, if if it sees water running because you're waiting for um, the hot water, it will pump that water back into let's say the geyser. Okay, now I think that's a very interesting and a very um, good um, uh, proposal that, because a lot of water get um, wasted like that. Then iced power air conditioning. So it works by freezing water in a tank overnight and then using the ice uh, to, to cool the building the next day. Okay, so but as one of the comments was, you still need, you still, you're still going to need the energy to freeze that water. Okay, uh, now it, this design was able to provide enough cooling for the building for up to six hours. Okay, so that's um, that's uh, something new. Then. Um, Okay, okay, so the four to 50, 50 uh, okay, yeah. Um, then sensor enhanced, that's an ingenious product and built in 2015, consists of sensor driven vents that replace a uh, home uh, existing ceiling, wall, or floor vents. Okay, so the system utilizes sensors to monitor a home's temperature, air pressure. Now, that's actually then having a smart home, that's part of the smart home. Okay, um, yeah, so it's different units, so it's it's unit conversion, so quite correctly, thank you there from uh, Basak there. Then dual fuel pumps, um, so the heat pumps tend to be more efficient and provide maximum amount of comfort when using combination of fuel. Okay, so dual fuel uh, heat pumps is another uh, development. Then uh, along the same lines, uh, geothermal technology. Um, uh, the major investment to save you money over the lifetime, so geothermal pumps. It's not new technology, but it hasn't really caught on until recently. Okay, but it's, it's also quite an installation in order to do that, because um, when when uh, cooling is needed, the process occurs in the re reverse. Um, so you've got these underground loop pipes that absorb the heat and carry it into the home, but also cooling in reverse. But you, so you, you can do, you use the same principle that what they're using with the sign river. Smart fully automated homes. Okay, so that's where we're going to. And with that, you have better control in terms of inefficiency. So there's the integration of smart technologies, smart temperature control, advanced sensors, algorithms, remote operation, um, you, energy efficiency optimization. So automatically adjust energy consumption, adopt efficient silent design, 
um, intelligent refrigeration uh, um, equipment and personalized setting. Okay, so there's a list of what is happening. Um, yeah, 100% um, there's a question about high schooling be applicable somewhere else, the data centers. I think 100% uh, if, uh, if you, but you must go and look at the energy efficiency um, in in uh, cooling down uh, the water, uh, um, getting that to ice. Um, and then you've got the ice to use maybe the rest of the, the next day uh, for cooling. Uh, 3D printed air conditionings. Um, okay, so that's uh, another development. A 3D uh, printed brick that draws moisture out of area to cool it. So that's um, something that they're looking at. Harnessing heat from the computer. Now, the, we, all, we all know that if you have a computer, a games computer, the massive heat sink and the fan that is needed because of the amount of heat generated by the CPU. Okay, so key HVAC industry trends in 2024 to sort of summarize here. The Internet of Things is growing, allowing some home appliances to communicate via the smartphones. Sustainable building design, greener, more focus on energy efficiency. Um, now, DVAP HVAC, um, evaporated cooling systems, solar HVAC, so heat pumps, solar HVAC systems draw energy from the sun to warm the liquid, then heats up the air. Geothermal, below ground pipes, as you see what is happening in France and applicable to the, um, yeah. All right, so that brings us to the end of our uh, presentation. So we, we, although we did answer some questions already, so you can, you're welcome to ask some questions now. So I'm just going to go back to this slide. Okay, thank you okay. so much, Fricky. That was a lovely presentation. Uh, so during this time, ladies and gentlemen, as Fricky has mentioned, if you have any questions, please type them in the chat box. I will allow for about five to ten minutes for you guys to ask your questions, and then uh, we will then have uh, Fricky answer them as they come in. Uh, so the slide up on your screen currently is our related courses to the lecture to the webinar that we're currently in actually. So HVAC forms part of mechanical engineering and these are the courses that we offer at EIT. We actually have a professional certificate of competency in heating, ventilation and air conditioning, an advanced diploma, graduate diploma, as well as a bachelor's and master's in the field of mechanical engineering. In terms of your certificates of attendance, I am actually going to put in a link on the chat box. Uh, it is a direct link to the Microsoft form that you guys will need to fill in in order to request for your certificate. Uh, whilst we're still on uh, the webinar and Fricky is, on, is answering your questions, please open the link so that I know that everyone is able uh, to get the link and is able to fill in their details to request for their certificates. Please note that in order for you to get the certificate, you will need to actually uh, complete the form or sign the form, fill in the form before the 29th of April at 5 a.m. UTC time. As you can see up on the screen, no further requests for the certificates will be accepted after the form has closed. So please be sure to follow the link or scan the QR code up on the screen. Currently, I'm just putting the link in the chat box. Uh, there we go. Okay, and then in this time that I will be leaving the link up on the screen, Fricky, you are welcome uh, to actually answer the questions that our prospects are sending in the chat box. All right, so let's... Uh, um, okay, okay, yeah. Um, okay, that's shading from the sun uh, heat. Um, of the condenser for the split unit improve its efficiency. Yeah, just as shading from the windows. So um, 
so I remember um, that heat is going to influence um, the uh, that that heat is going to influence the operation of the condenser. So yes, it will. Um, okay, expand on solar AC units. Um, what is the operation mechanism when compared to typical refrigeration? So the idea behind that is if you can use anything from the sun. So just like we've got um, a sun pump um, to pump water, for example, but it only happens when you've got sunlight. So when you've got sunlight, if you can utilize the sunlight for providing the energy that you need for your air conditioning unit. So, the, um, okay, let me just get to the next one. Uh, all right. Um, Okay, knowing that humidity is closely monitored in data centers, what technology is deployed to help monitor that in ice cooling? Um, now, remember, you're just going to use the ice as part of the cooling system. So the monitoring of the humidity is, is still going to happen. It's going to be part of your air conditioning system and if there's humidity coming in because you utilize the ice, it's the same system that's going to reduce that to the correct humidity level. Okay, so remember, this, this sits on the outside. It just, uh, it just uh, provides the, the cooling that you need for uh, cooling down the, um, uh, the, com the, the let's say, the computers are inside. Um, can you emphasize on the concept and importance of uh, design uh, uh, as how it's essential to cooling and calculations in building or in space? Now, um, because I've been involved in energy efficiency, um, what, what's very important is that uh, if, if you can, part of your design, do any measurement. Okay, so we, we've, we've looked at the calculation, we've looked at all the different mechanisms that brings it in. So basically what you have to go and determine, because, you know, we've got tables that tells you if the wall is made out of that, then that is going to be the amount of heat that you'll get on the inside. But you still have to verify that, you still have to measure that. And that's part of design for me. Okay, um, okay, the... Can, you can get access to the presentation slides. Uh, uh, as, as far as I know, that that's available. Okay. Um, principal skaters for the increase in temperature of a region over time after calculating possible number of occupants. Uh, okay, let's just go back. I, okay, so I'm... Oh, well, I... I assume you're talking about the the uh, the seasonal temperature that can change over time. Yeah, and that remember that what I mentioned also. What's in, what's interesting is uh, when we were looking at the person itself that you try to keep comfortable. Now there is differences between men and women. There is differences between people with different diets, people living in different areas. Okay, so, um, and again, there's, there is tables that, that give you those figures. Um, in Africa, we know furnace as a fuel used in steam boilers. What does it mean? In, okay. Okay, remember, they've, in Europe and the United States, they've got furnaces and which is normally run off of natural gas that they that they use to help with heating up. Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, those are our last two questions. I think it's Day and then Manso. I hope I am pronouncing your name correctly. And then we will have to close up the session. Our hour is up. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, yeah.
All right, if there's specific questions that you want to pass on, if you can maybe pass the comments on to me, I can draw up a, a Q&A, um, and then you can send it to all the people afterwards. So if you can do that, for those questions that we didn't answer, I'll, I'll get back to you um, with a one-page Q&A, so just to answer those questions we didn't get to, because I must also run off to the next presentation now. All right, so from my side, thank you for your attendance and uh, goodbye for now. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we had to let Fricky go. However, I am going to note down the last three questions that I see. I think it's from Dame and So and Charles. Yeah, and then, yeah, Charlie Leonardo. I will note them down and send them to Fricky. Hopefully, he will be able to give you answers to the questions that uh, you have. Uh, I would just like to go through the certificate of attendance as well as the slide and recording of uh, the webinar. The slides and the recording will be sent to you guys within two business days. They will be sent to your emails. These are the emails that you use to register for this webinar. The certificate of attendance, I've provided links in the chat box. I will make sure to provide provide the link again. Those who are able to, please scan the QR code on the screen. If you're unable to scan the QR code, I am leaving the link in the chat box. I will wait for about five more minutes to see if there are any questions that you guys would like to ask uh, to Fricky that I will pass on to him. Uh, other than that, thank you so much for attending this webinar. Hoping to see you on our next one. I hope it was as informative as we had attended or intended rather. I will be sure to uh, leave the link to the certificate of attendance.